Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before we go ahead with the concepts of genetics, uh, we will quickly have a recap of whatever we know, whatever we have studied in our earlier classes so that it, is, it becomes easier for you to understand the concepts of genetics. So let us see what happens to the chromosome number during reproduction because chromosome is going to play the main role in the story of genetics. So when we talk about, when we try to understand the basics of genetics, chromosome is going to play the main role, the leading role in a movie. That's how the role of chromosome is here. Okay. So what happens? Now we already have discussed about the process of sexual reproduction in human beings. So we, we have the basic idea about what is a chromosome, how many chromosomes exist in a human body. So we know all those stuff, right? So let us quickly understand what happens to chromosome number during reproduction. Now we know that all the cells in the human body are diploid, right? That is the chromosomes exist in pairs and how many chromosomes do human beings have? So humans have a total of 46 chromosomes or you can say there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? Now out of these 23 pairs, 22 pairs are autosomes, that is they are, they are the uh, like the chromosomes for all the body cells. All the cells of the body has these chromosomes. So they are the autosomes. And the last pair, that is the 23rd pair, that is the sex chromosome. Right? So this is, this is how the chromosomes are. Now each and every cell inside the human body has 46 chromosomes. Each cell. Whether you talk about the skin, the cells present in the skin, they also have 46 chromosomes. The cells present in, uh, in any part of your body, each and every cell has got 46 chromosomes. And out of these 46 chromosomes, 44 are autosomes and 2 are sex chromosomes. Now, what happens during reproduction? Now, for introduction, you need two human beings. One has to be a male and the other has to be a female. So, let us suppose this is the father and this is the mother. Right? Now, what happens? Now, inside each and every cell inside the father's body, again, it has how many chromosomes? As I said, it is going to have 46 chromosomes. Right? So, it has 46 chromosomes. That is 44 plus 2. Correct? Similarly, inside the mother body, each and every cell has 46 chromosomes, which is nothing but 44 autosomes plus 2 sex chromosomes. Now, during sexual reproduction, what happens is, the father contributes the sperm. What is sperm? So, father contributes the sperm, which is the male sex cell or the male gamut. And the mother contributes the egg. What is egg? It is the female sex cell or the female gamut. Now, this sperm and egg, they are haploid. Now, they are not diploid. Now, when I say haploid, that means they do not have 46 chromosomes. Rather, they have only half the chromosome number. That means they have a total of 23 chromosomes. Please remember, here I am talking about 23 chromosomes, not 23 pairs. So, the sperm will have total 23 chromosomes. The egg will also have total 23 chromosomes. Right? Now, this 23 chromosome will consist of 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome. Similarly, this will also consist of 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome, right? Now, this sperm and this egg with this constituent, they will combine together during the process of fertilization and they will form a zygote. And what is zygote? Zygote is going to be diploid. Why is it diploid? Because the 22 autosomes will combine with these 22 autosomes. So it will have 44 autosomes. And this sex chromosome will combine with this sex chromosome. So it will have two sex chromosomes. So again, this zygote has how many total chromosomes? It has 46 chromosomes. Right? So this zygote will again then divide and form other parts of the body. So, what do we understand from this? From here we understand that these specialized sex cells are the male and the female gamete, that is the sperm and the egg. 
they contain one representative of each type of chromosome and not the pair. So when you talk about these pairs, what are these pairs actually? Now each of these chromosome is made up of contain the gene. So one chromosome maybe it looks somewhat like this and on this chromosome are located thousands of genes. Now the number of chromosomes present in a cell is fixed. It has to be 46. But on each chromosome we have thousands of genes. And what do each gene represent? Each gene contains information about a particular characteristic or a particular trait. For example, this one gene may represent your eye color. Again, this one gene may represent your hair color. So each gene is it contain information about a particular trait, right? So what happens? This zygote which is formed is made up of, it contains half the chromosomes from the father and half the chromosomes from the mother. So that means for each trait, so if you talk about hair color, they, and that is suppose the color of the hair in case of father is black and color of hair in case of mother is brown. So basically this zygote will have one chromosome which has a gene saying that the hair color should be brown. It will also have another chromosome with another gene saying that the color of the hair should be black. So now who will decide whether the kid will have brown hair or black hair or a hair color different than brown and black? Exactly. That is what we will see in this lesson. So now you got it right that where exactly I mean, how the process actually happens. So whatever traits the father has, it will pass one copy of the trait to the uh, through the sperm. So the sperm will contain half the set of chromosomes and each of them will contain all the genes and each gene will uh, correspond to a particular trait or a particular characteristic. Similarly, mother will also contribute from her end. Now these two will combine and will decide what the kid will have. Now the, the, the thing what we have to understand in genetics is what are the principles that decides that what will be the hair color for the kid. If the hair color for the father is brown, for mother is black, so what it will, it will be for the kid. So we will understand those underlying principles which decides how the child will be if the father and the mother has got similar traits or different traits. Right? or under what scenarios the child gets a trait which is missing in both father as well as mother. For example, the father has got black hair, mother has got brown hair. Now, it might also happen that the kid got a little reddish hair, right? So, how does those variations come up? So, this is what we are going to talk about in this lesson. Now, why I told you this is so that you should be able to relate that how reproduction happens and where exactly in that process of reproduction heredity plays a role. Now some of the new terms, I mean, I, I don't think they are new to you anymore because they have already been introduced in class 10. But still just to remind you, let me quickly recap these terms because I'll be using these terms quite often when I actually start my uh, lecture on genetics. So autosomes, sex chromosomes, diploid and haploid. So quickly let us talk about autosomes. What are autosomes? These are the chromosomes other than the sex chromosomes. As I said, human beings have total 46 chromosomes out of which 44 are autosomes. So these chromosomes decide the characteristics of all the body cells. For example, hair color, eye color, uh, your shape of the eye, the shape of the mouth, shape of different organs. I mean all these traits, all the traits of your body are decided by these uh, by the genes present on the autosomes. They exist in pairs and each of which has same form. I mean they will be in pairs as, as we all know and they control the somatic traits that is the traits, different traits of the body like shape, eye color, shape, eye shape, hair color, skin color, ear shape etc. Now here members of a pair have the same form but they differ from other pairs in a diploid cell. Right, for example, if you talk about one pair of autosome, for example, let us suppose this is one pair of autosome. So if this pair correspond to eye color, I mean, not eye color exactly, I mean if this pair had, because eye color will be determined by the genes which are present on these autosomes. Now these two autosomes will have the same form, I mean whatever gene it will have, let us suppose this autosome had gene for eye color, gene for hair color, gene for 
eye shape so then this will also have a similar form this will be eye color this will be hair color this will be eye shape right but just that one is inherited from the father and the other one is inherited from the mother but both of them will represent the same thing so that means they will have the same form however this autosome pair and this autosome pair they will not necessarily have the same form so they will have different forms so two different pairs of autosomes will be different from each other but members of a pair of autosome they will have the same form the in humans 22 pairs of autosomes exist that is a total of 44 autosomes exist now if you talk about the other type of chromosome that is the sex chromosome that is the last pair it determines the sex of an individual so this chromosome actually decides whether the individual is going to be a male or a female like that is also very interesting right like when a baby is born what decides whether the baby is to be a baby girl or a baby boy so that is decided by this sex chromosome so in humans one pair of sex chromosome exists so in that one pair one part comes from the mother and the other part comes from the father so here you can see the list of all the 46 chromosomes in human body so starting from 1 till 22 these are all the autosomes so they are the autosomes and the last one this one is the sex chromosome so the, this last uh, set of chromosomes decides whether the person is going to be a male or a female right Okay, so here if you see, one is contributed from the mother, the other one is contributed from the father. Okay, so now let us talk about diploid and haploid. So diploid, when we talk about diploid, it means that a cell which has two complete sets of chromosomes, it is normally represented as 2N. So all the cells of our body are diploid cells because they have two sets of chromosomes. So here you can see. Two sets of chromosomes, one set is from the father and the other set is from the mother. So for everything, for every chromosome you will have two sets of it. If you talk about haploid, it is a cell with a single set of chromosomes. That is just one set of chromosome. You do not have the other part. So example, now if in case of diploid cells, all the somatic cells, that is all the cells of our body are diploid cells. Examples of haploid cells would be the male and the female gamete, that is the sperm cell and the egg cell. Now they are haploid. And that now since they are haploid, so they just have single cell. So the sperm cell will have a single chromosome. Again, the egg cell will have a single chromosome, but when they both fuse together to form a zygote, so the zygote will again have two sets of chromosome that is why it is diploid so this one set will come from the sperm the other set will come from the egg and that is why it's inside each and every human being each inside each cell each cell is going to be diploid therefore inside each cell your chrome you will have two sets of chromosome one the pat one is the paternal set the other one is the maternal set so there are chances now when you give your sperm or when you give your egg there is a possibility that you might give your maternal set or you might give your paternal set because these human beings later will again form the sperm, right? And how that sperm is formed? So from diploid cells, you actually end up forming haploid cell and that happens by meiotic cell division, meiosis. You remember we spoke about mitosis and meiosis. So in meiosis, it is reductional division where you uh, produce haploid cells from diploid cells and that is how gametes are being produced. Now all these concepts I have already taught in previous lessons, right? So you know all these things. Okay, so that's about haploid and diploid. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.